Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm here with another Fake Grand Order video. You may notice I sound very tired, and that's because I just finished recording an hour and 39 minute video dedicated to this banner, only to realize most of these units <laughs> are always in every single banner. Um, so I decided to record a shorter video just to kind of like say, hey, here's what I overall feel. And then if you want to summon, do your best. And if you want a deeper look into it, I will link it in the comments and in the um, in the box below if you want to see it. It is, you can hear me slowly lose my mind. At one point I snap at my brother. It was really rough. It was a very rough recording video, but I did promise I'd do every single one of them and I did. So let's quickly talk about this banner. Uh, Valentine's Day 2024 pickup summon. It is a lot of units that are always in every single banner, but they are five stars and there are some that are locked. What are the benefits of actually summoning for units that are usually always on every single banner? Um, well, the one thing is, is that typically units that always are on every single banner don't have their own rate ups. So, for example, even though Saber over here, this is a bad example because JP recently got a ticket that gave you a free Saber. So let me move on to Dioscuri. Dioscuri, for example, how many chances are you going to get to actually have a guaranteed chance at Dioscuri? The answer is not a whole bunch. And the reason is because guys, Dioscuri is in almost every single banner, is in every single banner, um, because they are not locked in any kind of way. They're not limited. They're not story locked. They're not anything. Um... So you can kind of just go for them at any point or else at the same time they're also on tickets where it's like pick a free five and then they would be one of the picks there. So it's kind of like there's no real reason to summon for them unless you just badly want to guarantee them. Uh, I say that but the one the units that I will pick out are the ones that are actually technically limited. Then I'll say hey if you are going to summon for any of these units I think these units are probably likely worth summoning for because of how hard it is to actually get banners for them. Um... Number one is, of course, Quetzalcoatl, even though she comes back closer to the end of December, I believe. Shut up. She's still a very hard unit to get. She's also a very lovely unit. I wasted a lot of time talking about how good Quetzalcoatl is in the other video, so if you want to check that out, you can check it out there. But she is story locked, which makes her a big pain in the ass to get more copies for, so this would be your best chance of getting them. Queen Maeve is kind of the exact same way. She is both a single target writer who is story locked, and it's a big pain in the ass to get more copies of her. I will say at MP1, she's perfectly serviceable for what she needs to do, and you don't really need her MP2. Um, there are some people who just like getting MP2 because they like the unit, and I think that's a perfectly valid way to kind of summon for a unit and do it that way. We have uh, Lancer Saber over here, who is uh, also story locked. Um, I have it's really weird right now. If you have, she's a usable AOE Lancer. Um, she's usable. And it's a I'm a little bit weirded out on how to talk about AoE Lancers sometimes. Because either I don't bring her up and someone brings it up in the comments. Or I bring it up and then someone says you shouldn't compare it to all of them. So it's a damned if you do, damned or you don't. But every Lancer has to live in the shadow of Melusain. If you have Melusain, there's really no reason to ever use any other AoE Lancer unit. Unless you just really like them or want to have fun with them. That's different. If you're thinking in a terms of pure power, there's no reason to ever use another one. But if you're thinking of it in different ways, there's always valid reasons to use other units. <laughs> um, and she's actually usable. She has a 50% MP charger that you can use and it's perfectly solid and perfectly good. Um, I think she kind of has a little bit of problems with some damage because it doesn't look like she has too much damage from what I can remember. Even though I literally just talked about her. Um, and yeah, she's there. And she's story locked, so you don't get a whole bunch of her. I wouldn't mind having her because I actually really like her. That's one of the reasons why I went for the summer version. Is because I really like the character and it's almost impossible for me to get her. I've been wanting her for years and she's just never on any banner that I can justify summoning on. Um, ever. Um, and then the other one and the last one of it is Setonia, who is a Ilya. She can fight against dragons. She's single target, um, arts related. She has a bear called Shiro. Really cool if you're a big fan of Ilya, like Lerp was. Um, I mean, Lerp still loves Ilya. He just doesn't play for Go anymore. 
Um, and he had her MP5 before uh, he stopped playing the game anyway. <laughs> I think his quest to get uh, Setonia is one of the reasons why he stopped playing the game. Because he on Valentine's Day, there was a banner where it was a 50% chance of getting Murasaki Shikabu and a 50% chance of getting Setonia. And he just wanted one copy of Setonia and he left that banner with an MP5 Murasaki. And he never used her. <laughs> Not once. He until he stopped playing the game, he never stopped hating <laughs> Murasaki Shikamo. Which is a shame because I would love to have his NP5 Murasaki. <laughs> um And yeah, those are the only units that I would consider limited. It's really weird because story locked units are limited with extra steps. They are just as hard to get as limited units, if not harder. Uh, because when they do offer the chance of getting a free 5-star ticket, sometimes they'll offer limited units, and then Quetzalcoatl will not be on it. And sometimes they'll offer free units, and Quetzalcoatl will not be on it. <laughs> they have to very specifically say, free, uh, every, not free units, because I, I gotta stop saying free units. But units that are on every banner, and story lot units. Because they are technically considered limited units, it's just an extra step of limited um, which makes them very hard to get. And yeah, that's basically this banner. Uh, if you want my advice as to not summon for them, obviously if you love any of the units here, like I would never tell someone don't summon for Quetz. Um, but there's obviously a lot of banners coming this year. I think every single banner that I talk about is going to live in... <laughs> Live in the shadows. <laughs> My favorite phrase that I love to say, apparently. But they're it's going to have to live in the shadows of summer and anniversary. Because Archetype Earth, the three summer units that are coming out, are on a lot of people's radar. Prototype Merlin, there's Summer Scotty, there's Summer um, Abuki. Um, and like I said, Archetype Earth. And that's enough to kind of make people pause and be like, I don't know. I want to really badly summon. For my case, I'm already recovering from failing to get Bazette. If I had gotten Bazette in like a single multi and a bunch of... Uh, I would have saved those last two multis to try for Quetz. That didn't work out that way. I failed to get them. So I'm just going to have to skip Quetz's banner and just not look at it. And attempt to kind of live my life that way. And yeah, that's kind of what this banner is. I did promise I I would talk about it, and I do talk about it. I'm going to link the video. You can see in the comments or check the box below. I forget the fuck the fuck the box is called that is below every video, but it's in there too. Um, and yeah, I spent a lot of time talking about that banner. I'm tired. I was gonna hope to record other things. So I'm not gonna record anything else. <laughs> I am I am done. I wish you the best of luck on your summons if you go for them. Hopefully you were able to pull Bazette if you were able to get Bazette. Um, if you want to know which one of these units I think are actually like good, that I have enough um, experience with, Saber is actually good. Altera is on. I would be really interested to use her with the buff, which is coming with the Fates, uh, not Fates Day Night, with um, learning with manga. Um, I, mine is Bond 10. I wouldn't necessarily call her good in the current state that she in that she's in, but she does get an MP charger that gives her at least 30%, so that makes me at least want to put her in usable. Mordred becomes really good when she gets that other buff that we do not have just yet, uh, so I would curr currently consider her usable. I don't know enough about Dire Security to give you an opinion. I don't know enough about Orion to give you an opinion. Um... I think she, the Lancer uh, Saber is usable. Bradamante on JP I think is actually usable. On NA, she's not going to be usable until she gets that buff. So you have to wait for the buff. Because as it is right now, the 4-star Lancers are better options than her. Vitra was really solid and clutch during the, um, the raid that most recently happened. So that makes me want to say that she is good. Drake, I think, suffers from some damage problems. But still pretty usable. Queen Maeve, really good. Worth going for. Quetzalcoatl, uh, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, absolutely love her, stop treating my girl wrong, Fago, um, absolutely 100% worth every single Quartz that you have. Uh, Europa, don't know enough to comment, Tamamo, extremely good, awesome unit, worth going for. Songzong, really good unit, 
it's going to depend on the person. If you if you care about a single target caster, there are some people who just straight up say like you don't need single target casters. So I'm not going to try and convince them. Play the game you want to play it. But I will say that I have over the years loved having Zong Zong, and she has always been super clutch and super weird events where I'm like hell yeah, I need a single target servant that gives herself 80% <laughs> noble phantasm damage, and also thanks to the starting skill of hers, she has actually 100% really good. Shirazade, fantastic unit, lover, has an anti-king, um, is anti-king, is able to do some wacky stuff against king bosses, um, and can also still AoE farm, so she has the best of both worlds. Anastasia, uh, she needs more of a gimmick, um, I'm not convinced on her, I have Anastasia and I just never use her over Shirazade as it is as it stands currently on NA. Jack is really good, um, I never use her nowadays, but back in the day, I used her a whole bunch. What changed? Um, I got Kama, and Assassin Kama is so good, there's no reason to use any other Assassin uh, quick unit at all. Um, and so it kind of makes Jack suffer a little bit, but even though she's an early unit, still a very solid kit. Asuka Bahime actively confuses me, and I have no idea if she is good or bad. Ask Hime fans, feel free to tell me. Nightingale suffers from being a berserker with a really interesting kit, <laughs> with zero guts and she dies instantly. Galatea, I think is usable, but just isn't Vlad. Jean the Arc is a unit that I would never use in stall, in stall teams, uh, because I'm not a fan of stall teams. But that being said, she is insane for stall teams. If you love stalling the game to an insane degree, if you like playing stun, if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player who says, actually, I love playing with Floodgates, Gen, get Jean, she's your girl. Janako, um, usable, but not in a way that really stands out to me. And Setonia is also usable. And that's how I feel about every single one of these units. If you want an in-depth look, where even I give more of an opinion, because I'm more talking about the kits themselves, you can check out the video. Then I linked, that I've mentioned too many times, because I'm so goddamn tired. That's the end of the video, everyone. Happy Persona 4 Remake release day. Um... Hopefully you're playing. If you're not playing, you should go play. Actually, let's end the video hearing the new version of When the Moon Reaches Out Stars, which is uh, the reload version, which I still don't know how to feel about this song. Like, if you just listen to it, it's like, okay. I'm kind of feeling the beginning of it. Yeah. Go for it. Mmm! Yeah, I feel weird. I can hear the miserable. I don't know how to feel about this. Get... Hmm. But I'm kind of feeling it a little bit. You can't see me t touching my chin, but I am touching my chin as I listen to this. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching the video, everyone. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Best of luck on your summons.